Good evening. Here is the world news from BGI TV, Baba Bagede Imo TV. I am Mori Revila Lawal. First, are the major headlines for the world news. Economic hardship revealed national minimum wage. Youth tells Buhari. Buhari congratulates Adeyino Okoye, six others on U.S. midterm elections. Will prosecute those arrested over security threat, police IG. Protest in Oshobo over alleged plans to dethrone Oba Ataoja of Oshobo land. Troops in search of abducted soldier kill four, recover weapons. Jaji communities sue military over move to displace 400,000 residents. Ebu Biagu abducts assault Ebu in PDP chief 10. Government kidnapped medical doctor, one other in play two states. And to foreign story within Africa, South African government workers embark on strike over pay. And lastly, on sports, Super Eagles coach Pacero confirms latest interest in Lauren Italy on the 21 defender to represent Nigeria. Now the news in detail. The leadership of the Northern Youth Council of Nigeria, NYCN, has called on President Mohamed Buhari led government to review the national minimum wage to reflect on the present economic reality Nigerians are going through. The NYCN national president, Isa Abubakar, in a statement made available to Daily Post said, it is no longer speculation that the purchasing power of Naira has dropped significantly and the higher cost of food stock is telling on Nigerians. People are presently living from hand to mouth in Nigeria. The youth also called on the government of President Buhari to immediately take steps to see how it can intervene and ameliorate the suffering of Nigerians and give them hope of living. The youth suggested it is very important as well to review the monetary policy to making sure that businessmen have some sort of credit loan at a very low interest rate to help sustain their businesses with the economic hardship on Nigerians. The economic team of Mr. President must wake up and find a solution to our economic problems. The statement noted that it is high time for the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, TUC, to step in favour of Nigerians, saying that their silence looks more like a compromise to the hardship Nigerians are suffering from. To the next story from Presidency. President Mohamed Buhari congratulated eight Nigerians, Americans, on their victory during the midterm elections in the United States on Wednesday. In a statement signed by the presidential spokesperson, Femi Adeshino, the president was quoted to have prayed for a successful tenure for all the Nigerians. President Mohamed Buhari extended warmest congratulations to eight Nigerian Americans on their victory in the U.S. midterm elections. In Georgia State, Shegun Adeino, Gabi Okoye, Solomon Adesoya, T. Nagese, and Phil Olale won their legislative seat as state representative in their respective districts. Similarly, Carol Kazim won the Pennsylvania state representative in District 159. Esther Agbaje was re-elected as Minnesota state representative in District 59B, while Dr. Oye Owolewa was re-elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, shadow representative in Washington, D.C. In prayerful wishes for a successful tenure in office, President Buhari thanks them for their invaluable support and partnerships over the years with groups affiliated with the ideals and objectives of Nigerians in diaspora associations in the United States, restating his unflinching support for every Nigerian excelling at home and abroad. President Buhari believes that compatriots who succeed in good courses are asset to the nation and continent, nothing that their contribution will always be remembered and celebrated. To the next story from the police. The Inspector General of Police, Usman al Kalibaba, has said some suspects arrested following the advisory issued by the United States and United Kingdom in Abuja recently will be charged to court soon. The IG, however, declined to give accurate statistics on the number of criminal elements arrested in connection with the threat. He also denied insinuations that the government tried to dismay the advisory noting that it drew criticism from security stakeholders because it caused apprehension among citizens. 
Al-Khali Baba made these remarks on Thursday while featuring at the weekly briefings coordinated by the presidential media team in Abuja. His words, nobody has dismissed the issue as just an alarm. The government has never dismissed it as an alarm, but we only said it was blown or made in such a way that our people became apprehensive about the situation or the way it was done. The embassies have their responsibilities to their citizens and they can make their advice. The government has not dismissed what has happened because they have also informed us of what they foresee as threat. Sometimes this threat or things happen but nobody has dismissed it as mere alarm and a lot of efforts have been made, like you said, to douse the tension. From that story, we go to Oshun State. The widely rumored plans to dethrone Oba Jimo Ola Nipekun, the Atauja of Oshogo, have led to tension in the Oshun State capital as some residents have taken to the streets to protest. The protesters had on Thursday morning stormed some streets in Oshogo bearing placards with different descriptions and inscriptions. Some of the placards read, Don't cause confusion in Oshogo, stop the attempt to depose Oba Jimo Ola Nipekun, and others. Earlier, Daily Post had reported that the state governor, through his media aide Ismail Omikpidon, denied the allegations. In a press statement on Thursday, Omikpidon described the rumor as mischievous and wicked. He also advised the Oshogo Action Committee not to incite the people against the Oshun State Governor Adeboyega Oyitola. The Oshogo Action Committee, through its leader Ajadi Badmos, had written to the state governor expressing concern and revealing that it was aware of plans to dethrone the Oshogo monarch. Ajadi also disclosed that a frosty relationship between the governor and the monarch may be the reason behind the government's alleged move. Moving to the next story, the Nigeria Army on Wednesday claimed that some troops of Headquarters 82 Division NA invaded Amago community in Abia State, killing some residents. Brigadier General Onyema Onwachiku, Director of Army Public Relations, in a statement on Thursday described the claim as false. He noted that the troops were in search of one of its personnel, Staff Sergeant Basi Ikunagwa, who was officially on leave pass but was abducted along Road or Kuebem or Afia in Abia State. Action on credible intelligence report troops embarked on a search and rescue operation at Amango village. Forest having confirmed same as an indigenous people of Biafra IPOP and Eastern Security Network ESN enclave where the soldier was reportedly held or state, he said. He said during the search and rescue operations, contact was made with members of the prescribed armed groups resulting in exchange of fire, during which troops neutralized one of the criminals and recovered one AK-47 rifle with a magazine loaded with seven rounds of 7.6mm special and one mobile phone. He also said during a follow-up on 5th November 2022, troops raided another enclave of the groups around Amago village in Abia state, neutralized two of the criminals while some fled with gunshot wounds. So the next story in Jaji area. All community of Jaji military cantonment in Kaduna State have dragged the military authorities to the Kaduna State High Court over alleged encroachment on their ancestral lands and harassment by the men and officers of the cantonment. The communities claimed that the land acquired by the military in 1976 had clear boundaries, but the military has since exceeded the boundaries and are encroaching into the communities to displace about 400,000 people. The case which came up at the Kaduna State High Court 1 yesterday was however adjourned to December 8th for either hearing or reports of out-of-court settlement. Addressing journalists after the court session, counsel to the communities, which include Ongwang Auta Laber and Ongwang Al Hassan, Wusono among others, Joshua Uri, said the matter was coming to the court for the second time due to the violation of the court order by the military. Kuri explained that when the matter was first brought to court, the military opted for out-of-court settlement and a committee was set up to that effect at the Kaduna government house, but the military, in flagrant disobedience of a court order, started fencing the community into the cantonment while the settlement was ongoing. Moving back to the east from Ebony States. Operatives of the Ebubi Agu security outfit on Wednesday abducted and tortured a chieftain of the People's Democratic Party in Ebony State, Chief Abia Onyike. 
The point gathered that Onyike, a former commissioner for information in the state and deputy national president of the Nigerian Union of Journalists, was abducted at Octavia Pharmacy on Waterworks Road, Abakaliki, where he was said to have gone to buy some drugs for his medication. While in the pharmaceutical store, two FT men, suspected to be Ibubiago members, walked in there, bundled him into their Siena balls and whisked him away. The victim, who is a key spokesperson for the PDP governorship candidate in the 2023 general elections in Ebony State, Dr. Ifrayi Odi, was reportedly taken to the Buyagaragu office in Abakaliki, where he was ordered to remove his clothes and brutally beaten up until the call came for his release. Reacting, the Buyagaragu commander in the state, Friday Nana, said Onyike's arrest was mistakenly done as he was arrested in location where a suspect was being trailed. According to him, immediately after his name, place of origin and personality was ascertained, he was released. Moving to Plateau states. Suspected gunmen in just South and Mango local government areas of Plateau state have kidnapped a medical doctor and his friend who were in transit from Mango to Jaws. Tribune Online learned that a medical doctor identified as Dr. Noho Bakwa and his family who reside in Abuja was in foreign Kaza, a Mongol local government area, over the death of his father who passed away last week. A source close to the family disclosed that Dr. Bakwa and his family, along with a pastor friend, were traveling back to Abuja on Wednesday when the government met them at BCG in just south local government and forced the medical doctor and his pastor friend out of the car. They were traveling in and whisked them away. The source who said the unfortunate incident occurred at about 8 p.m. added that the gunman left the doctor's wife along with two other children in the car. He added that the wife, who was in a state of confusion, later alerted the relatives of her husband, who died to the scene of the incident along with some security men. The medical doctor and his family came home over the death of his father, who passed on last week. He left at about 6 p.m. along with his family and a friend who was simply identified as a pastor but who was kidnapped as BCG village in just South local government. From that Plato State story, we go to the foreign within Africa. Thousands of public workers in South Africa downed tools on Thursday in a nationwide strike over wages after talks with the government hit a deadlock threatening to affect essential services. The work stoppage was led by one of South Africa's largest labor unions, the Public Servant Association, which has more than 235,000 members. The wage settlements between the government and its employees escalated after Labor Minister Tilo Sexy last week declared he would unutterally implement a 3% increase across the board. Unions want a 6.5% hike. Union members, including nurses, immigration workers, and some police officers, picketed outside the Treasury office in Pretoria, waving black placards reading public servants are bleeding. The PSA had warned on Wednesday that a strike would have a serious impact on the home affairs, transport, and border control department within South Africa. To end the news from BGI TV is a sports story. The head coach of the national team of Nigeria, that was a senior team, Super Eagles, Jose Pesero, says he has been busy scouting players for the national team of Nigeria from at least entire city are. Pesero's team will be in action against Portugal on the 17th of November, and the coach said he has already marked down areas where the team needs threatening after spending six months at the Hem Affairs as coach of the Nigerian team. He said the idea is to get young defenders as most of the players at the disposal in that department are nearing the age where they can be available at all times. To that extent, he has taken his start to the Italian league where he is keen on Atlanta Central defender Caleb Okoli. Okoli is born in Italy to Nigerian parents, making him eligible for Nigeria. He is presently an under-21 international for Italy, but he is still eligible for Nigeria as he is yet to play for their senior national team. Pacero said he will try to convince him to snub Italy and pledge his senior national future to Nigeria. That ends the world news from BGI TV. Before we go, some major headlines. Economic hardship, review national minimum wage, youth tell Buhari. Buhari congratulates six Nigerians and two others for U.S. midterm elections victory. We will prosecute those arrested over security threats, police IG. 
Arnold Sports Super Eagles coach Passero confirms interest in Lauren Italy on the 21 defender to represent Nigeria at the senior national level. For more updates on YouTube, our handle is Babagba Gede Imo TV. Kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell, select option all to access our broadcast on Facebook by Gede Imo with Alawiye Adebayo. Please like and follow the page on Instagram by Gede Imo underscore 22. For other placement of goods and services, coverage of events and functions, please dial the phone number streaming on your screen for advert placement only. Thank you for watching. I am Mori Re Rebila Lawa. Good evening. Oh, na -na -na. If you want to know what's going on in city, or you want to listen to the latest news and gist, no stress, oh, just listen to BGITV. If you want to know